Uh, the first one is just to graph or match a graph. This is that. I wanted you to match the graph of this function uh, to a couple of functions that are down there, but I figured we just use this as an opportunity to graph it um, to get our to get our lines going with what these logarithms do. Um, so this is our y. Now, like anything we graph, we make up a table of values and we pick some some nice inputs to give us easy to outputs. So with logarithms, we always remember there's this equivalent form of 2 to the y equals x. So in order to pick some x's, um, we look at powers of 2. So let's just go with uh, 1, which is obviously 2 to the 0 power. We look at 2, which is obviously 2 to the first. So I, I'm picking for my x a power of 2 and asking myself, what is the power? And that's my output. Okay, so this is these equivalent statements. Very important to remember and switch back and forth between one graph and something like this. So I'll just keep filling in some more here. And that's all part of it. I could go negative as well. Um, let me do that actually. So if I get negative one, is that possible? No, there's no power of two that'll give me a negative one. What I meant to do was require a negative exponent, would be, which would be something like this one half. Uh, okay, and that would be negative one. Two to the negative first is one half. So now this is our one half, and this is our negative one. Half. So we plot these, and we know there's no negatives that we are inputting for our x's, but our y's have this nice top. One, two, three, four, five. One half for right here. At one, we're at zero. At two, we're at one. Four, two, four, two. Eight, we're at three. Trying to estimate the height for my whole graph is curved. More or less, it looks something like this. Aside from the curved axes, that's a good, a good estimated graph. Okay. So yeah, whenever I think about these problems, I immediately think about this problem, just because I think it's easier to work with exponents and powers than it is to work with logarithms. But either way is fine. So there you have it. Number four, graphing of a logarithm. <laughs> Uh, the next problem that I had is uh, express the equation in exponential form. So this one's really basic, uses this exact, exact thing here. And it basically says this, it says logarithm base 5 of 1 fifth It says rewrite that in it's in this form. It says rewrite it in this form. So if you just more or less do a comparison here of, of what we've done, the base of the logarithm becomes the base of the exponential. The result of the exponential is this. And the power of the exponential is this. So over here, the equivalent form is 5 to the negative 1 is 1 fifth.
can be is page four sixty four. Someone tell me what this is as an answer. Log base four sixty four. What power of four gives us sixty four? Very good. And that's what you're answering, right? That, that's what to answer or to compute a logarithm, you're answering that question. What power of this base gives me this? That's what this is. Four to what power is 64? Three. That's the equivalent form. Okay, so the next question I had was 22. Yep. Is that a question? Online? Nope. Okay. Well, good morning, Liam. All right. So 22 mm -hmm. it expressed the logarithmic, uh, expressed the exponential in logarithmic form. 22 is 3 to the 2x. Equals 10. So that's an exponential form. And all we want to do is put it in logarithmic form. So here, there's maybe a little bit more guesswork. But I think the key to remember is use the same base. Okay. So the equivalent form is to use this logarithm of base three. Good morning. The 10 doesn't have a power on it explicitly. There is one there, but we're gonna use the three as our base because we've got some variables up in there. And I, I suspect there's a part B to this question. Solving. Nope, never mind. Just put it in logarithm form. Okay, here you go. So you can do log base three of three to the two x. Uh, <laughs> log base three. I wrote it this way, instead of going right to this, uh, this sort of idea, I could have easily said base three, 10 is 64, essentially, right? I could have said here, two X is the power, so that's three, is log base three of 10. But I wanted to write it this way just immediately because when you have a log base three, of an exponential with the base three, essentially that cancels it out. Like this is this is the this is the importance of inverse functions. If you take a function and you compose it with its inverse, what you're left with is the input. The exponential function, you have an input of two x. So you compose that exponential with this, and what you're left with is just your input. So on this left side, it's just 2x. And that's the exponential form, or the logarithmic form from this exponential form. Right? It's this base to this power is this. This base to this power is this. This base to this power is this. That's largely because they're inverse functions and what you're doing is what I just erased. Part B, uh, you can solve that, right? Just take one half of, on both sides and you've got it. Part B is 10 to the negative four X is 
doesn't matter, it's some number. And to put this straight into logarithmic form, this is the power. That's going to be equal to the log base 10. Zero point one. Okay. We can think of this again as like taking logarithms of both sides, the log base 10 canceling with this exponential with base 10 on the left side. I think of it as just what we input to that exponential. Okay. Questions so far? All we've really used so far is uh, this rule that if you have something like this, there's this equivalent form of this base to this power, and this result. That's all we need. I suppose there should be more rules, don't you think? Evaluate the expression. Okay, well, before we move, get on to that, um, we're gonna do some evaluations of these things. So help me out here. It's number 30, 4.3, number 30. Log base five. Do you think about that? I'll write down the next one. Log base seven of 49. Next one is log base nine of uh, root three. Anyone have a solution for any of these three? Yes. Three, perfect. Because five cubed is 1.5. Okay, it sounds like you have the second one. Two, because seven squared is 49. C. That's a nine, yeah, yeah. My chicken scratch is illegible most of the time. Thank you. Yes, that's a nine. One over six. Not quite. One over six would say nine to the one six, right? That's uh, that's nine to the one half to the one third. That's three to the one third, which is the third root of three. We only have the square root of three. Six is too big, but you got the right idea. Yes. Yep. Yep. That's true. He's using a rule, so this power can come down in front, and then you erase it. And what's log base nine and three? One half. One half. So the result is one four. Yes, yeah, see? This happens to me all the time. I'm looking at a three, so instead of taking one half times one half, I do one half times one third. <laughs> happens all the time. 
Yes. So I'm going to rewrite this in the original form. We can think of it again like I wrote here off the side. 9 to the 1 fourth. That's the same as 9 to the 1 half. To the 1 half. Right? That's 3 square root. That's what we've got here. And if we wanted to be fancier about it, we could do 4 through to 9. The same thing. Square the inside and take an additional square root. Not the easiest one. That's number 30. Um, number 41 was uh, use definitions to find, to solve for X. So, I mean, this first one is more or less just like what we did. So let's solve for X. This one's pretty easy. Mostly because I graphed this exact function earlier. So you should, this is one of the points that I plugged in. It says to use the definition, so it's this thing, the equivalent form. Ask yourself, two to what power is one half? Negative one. So this implies x is negative one. Perfect. Two to the negative first is one half. Part B to 41 is log base 10 of x. They're being kind of mean on this one. Maybe, maybe not. No, they're not being said. You can do this one. It's still in your head, I would say. Think of the equivalent form. Base 10. C is negative 3. So 10 to the negative third is 1 over 1,000 times hundreds of thousands. Point zero zero one or 1 over 1,000 or 10 to the negative 3. These are all totally acceptable answers. Questions so far? These are going real fast. I'm a little worried we're going to end about an hour early today. <laughs> 44, similar problem. Log base x. And part b. Log base x. Here they're asking, what's the base? Why? You're ready. Why? It's 36. If you know your perfect squares, right? It's 36. So, perfect. Hey, you can't answer this second one. Someone else has to. Because it's too good. So, 
So we got Exodus 36, chapter. The next one. Same format. AJ? 18. Not quite. to get 18. Did you sort out what happened? Oh. Wrong number. All right. Well, if it were 18, what we would need to have to be true is 18 to the third power. One third power is three, right? 18 is not a perfect cube. Two times three times three. Almost a perfect cube. Yeah. Remember the way powers work. Is it we have something cubed in here? It's like, I don't know if X is something cute. We'll say that. Okay. If X can be written as a perfect cube, then these powers cancel out, and we're left with just what that thing being cubed is. Does this piece this together. This is three. Right? So what we got here. The result of taking the third root is three. That's what we that's what we want. So that's why. So that's equal to the third root of three cubed, which is close. So close. Make this a three. Three times three times three is not eighteen. It's twenty-seven. It's so close. There, you got it. 27 to the third root is 3. So it's 27. Can you explain number? Um can you explain letter A again, please? Can I explain it again? Yeah. Yep. yep. So, let me see how far over. Yeah, I've got over here. So, um, so, so far, all we've used is this relationship between logarithms and exponents. Um, the logarithms and exponents. They have in common these bases, what we call bases. But then what they do with the input and output is they swap them. Right? So here, here we're inputting A, here we're getting out A. Here we're inputting C, here we get out C. So we, we can rewrite every logarithm problem like that problem and just ask ourselves a different question that solves our previous one. So this one, log base x of 3 is 1 third, based on that, says x to the 1 third is 3. So when we get a question like this, then we start using our, our knowledge of powers and how they work. Uh, our goal is to find the perfect cube. And the reason we're trying to find the perfect cube here is because 
third root of x is a whole number. Right? The third root, third because third root. Cancels cubes. The way it always works. If I take two cubed and then raise it to the one third, I get two. If I take three cubed and raise it to the one third, I get three. Four cubed to the one third is four, etc. etc. So when we're looking at a problem like this, which is essentially looking at this problem, because of this equivalent statement, um, we're looking for that perfect cube. And you know, when I write it out like this, I think it becomes more obvious and it's probably too easy. But um, I think that's the, the fundamental reason we're looking for this 27, this three cubed. Because we've got a third power here. We're looking for a perfect cube. X is that perfect cube. That answer your question? Yes, yes, sorry. <laughs> The silence is tacit compliance, so speak up. So the next one, what is that one? It's 44, <clears throat> moving right along. Now we've got 74, so I'm skipping way ahead now. 74 is um, finding the domain of the function. Okay, so this is log base five. So with domain questions, it is always, 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 always important to try and remember the most basic form of the function you're working with. In our case, that's just a logarithm. Now logarithms cannot take negative inputs. Okay? You cannot plug in a negative number here. Because these things, remember, they're the inverse to an exponential. And an exponential is never negative unless it has some negative in front of the whole thing, right? You've got a positive exponential, cannot get a negative. So logarithms, because they're the inverse, cannot have negative input because the input here is the output of that. And have negatives as our input. So here we've got a little bit more complicated logarithm. But the big idea is that this 8 minus 2x has to be positive. It can't be 0 either. No way. It cannot be. Why can't it be? I can't input to a logarithm be zero. Boom. It's got an asymptote there. Okay. Exponentials never reach zero. They get really close. You get closer and closer and closer the further out you go this way. But they never reach zero. Output of an exponential is not zero. So the logarithm's input cannot be zero. If you were to graph it, logarithm would look like this. It has an asymptote where it goes down to negative infinity. 
at zero. So we can't have equality there. Now we just solve this inequality, right? Two x over divide by two. There it is. That's one form. X is less than four. Another form is negative infinity to four. That way, set builder notation. Set of all x such that f is greater than x is done. Okay. Three alternative ways to do it. Right. That's it, 4.3. It's a pretty foundational set of problems on computing with logarithms. I'll say it does take some practice. So don't feel ashamed if it doesn't come right away. It does take some practice. And it really, really helps to know perfect squares, cubes, fourths, fifths, and one halves and one thirds and one fourths and one fifths. So you know you know what I mean? Like when you were in grade school, probably around fifth grade, you had these races with flashcards. You had flashcards on the table and you were like, go, 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 like just spouting off the multiplication tables out to 55, right? Now you need to know your squares, cubes, fourths, powers. Get a friend, swim team member, and just make some flashcards with perfect roots, perfect you know, things to the 17th power, and just race each other. Okay, it's like phase 10, but with flashcards, perfect roots. Okay, it's, it's necessary skill, really, for all of life. Say that tongue in cheek, but it is fun. It is, it can be fun, computations. When you think you're really good, race a computer. All right, section four gave us rules. Furthermore, gave us some rules uh, with exponentials and logarithms, mostly logarithms. And it, uh, these rules were more or less the change of base as well as uh, sums and differences and things like this. So I already saw Muhammad was using one of these. Clearly, he's already studied this, so let me just write it this way. Log n base of a to the c, a to the c are just numbers. We can always rewrite this as c times log base b of a. Always, no matter what those numbers are. Another rule is if you've got log of any base of a times c, that's always equal to log base b of a plus the log base b of c. Products expand into sums. The last one is for any base of logarithm, if you have a quotient where c is not zero, obviously. We can write this, well, neither a and c are zero. Say that, neither of them can be. This is the difference of logarithms. So, in all three of these rules, which relate products and logarithms to sums, quotients and logarithms to differences, and powers within logarithms to uh, multiple logarithms. Notice all of them have the same base. Base is maintained from left to right. Base B, base B, base B, base B, 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 B. All of these maintain the base. There is one extra rule that they give you in 404, which is a tool to change base. It's called the change of base formula. So you've got the log base B of And let's say for some reason you don't like the base B. Maybe it's irrational, maybe it's something you just don't prefer. You can always change it to a quotient logarithm. 
with any base you choose. So A is our new chosen base. Okay. And what you plug in to these new logarithms, looks like nine, is the old base and the old input. Okay. Just it allows you to change however you want the old base for a new one, but it requires the quotient of the logarithm of the old base to the logarithm of the old input. These are our tools in section four. Beyond the equivalent statement, these are our four tools. A bunch of problems here to work on, things like this. Number nine on section 4.4, they want you to evaluate the log, and they don't put a number of 50 plus the log without a number as well of 200. In this book, and whenever you're having a conversation with me, if there's no number stated here, Number is 10. It's the way lots of calculators work. This is the way most people do this. However, occasionally, sometimes this actually means the natural law of 50, the natural law of 200. Occasionally. It depends, I think, on the country from which the author comes. In, in the United States, this is the prevalent way of doing it. Base 10, not the natural law. But here we go. No. If you, if you use the exponential form, 10 to what power is 50? That's what this says. That's hard. That's not a perfect power of 10. That wouldn't be on the flashcards. Two hundred is not a perfect power of ten. Oh, we've got this nice tool over here. If you have two logarithms in sum with the same base, you can combine them. Wow, we got the same base here, sum. Perfect. And because when we were young, we actually did fifty-five with our products. Station tables, we want to 200. Right? We know what this is in fact. Yeah. So here we go. This is 10 to what power? Then to what power is 10,000? 10 to the third of the thousand. They are count to zero, right? Perfect. Yep. Perfect. This is cool. The next problem is 19. Any rule up there at the top of the 
says if we've got a power in here, we can bring it down. This is the same as 100 times the law of base 4 of 16. And if you want to be really obscene about this, don't write it like this. Write it like that. 16 is 4 squared. You can take that power out front too. 200 log base 4 of 4. And now the question is very basic. 4 to what power is 4? Wow. This is 1. The answer is, of course, 200. Okay. 34. Use the laws of logarithms to expand the expression. Take a second to finish writing here for one. Erase. I don't want to erase the rules because there are a toolbox. All right, 34 says natural log of r over 3 s. Yes, not a 5. Okay. Um, how can I use that for log s? What is the answer? Yes. No. Not a 5. Um, well, when they say to expand the logarithm, to expand, what they're really saying is they want it in terms of sums and differences. Okay, and any obvious powers are also taken. Okay. There's no obvious powers in here, so we're not going to use that top rule. But there's an obvious quotient. So let's take care of that. This is the natural log of R minus the natural log of 3S. Now an obvious product here. So let's expand that out. Natural log of R minus, and I'm going to put this in parentheses, natural log of 3 plus the natural log of S. Put it in parentheses because in this line we're subtracting the natural log of the product. And the product is expanded into a sum. So we still want to subtract the whole product. Now we can distribute the negative sign in general. Negative natural log of 3 minus natural log of s. This is the full expansion. So there's no obvious powers, there's no products that are obvious, there's no Quotients that are obvious. Next one I have is 52. It says use the log laws of logarithms to combine the expressions. Combining now is going in the reverse direction, starting here and compounding it down, combining it down. So we've got three natural log of two plus two natural log of x minus half the log of x plus. You gotta be careful here because there's coefficients on all these natural laws, right? But over here in these rules, for the combination into a product or the combination into a quotient, 
there's no coefficients except ones. One log b of a, one log b of c, one log b of a minus one log b of c. So before we use these rules, we have to change those into logarithms of ones plus or minus one. We're going to use this rule first. So this is power of the two. We had previously brought it down, I guess. Plus x squared. Minus, and now here you can do different things. I'm going to leave the negative sign, but you could write it this way. Change it to a plus, bring up the minus one half. That's totally allowed. I'm going to leave it as a minus and just bring up the one half. You get the same result. Okay. Rule two then says if you've got a sum of two logarithms with the same base, we can take logarithm of the product of them. So these two together become natural log of two cubed times x squared minus then natural log of x plus one half power. Rule three says this difference can be rewritten as the same logarithms here. We can write this difference as a quotient within the logarithm. So we take this first one, two cubed x squared, and divide it by that one, x plus four. Had you done the negative? Here. This would have been a negative still. This would have been a plus. So we would have multiplied these two together. But it would have had a negative sign here. So you would have brought it down into the denominator. But this is as compact as we can make it. We've taken this expansion, we've written it into one order. Questions on these rules so far? They're pretty straightforward. Last one I had from this section, and we're doing good on time, is 65. <clears throat> Use the change of base formula to evaluate it, round it to six decimal places. I think this is really funny, by the way, this problem. I think it's hilarious. They say use the chain base formula to evaluate this to six decimal places. Let's think about some pretty obvious bases we might choose. Five, because that's a perfect power of five. Okay, so if we choose that, we have to do this log base 5 of 125, which is clearly 3, over log base 5 of 4. Uh, if you can't compute this, you're up a creek, right? Okay, so now change the base here. Log base 4 would make sense, right? Because we've got 4. Or log base 2, that would make sense because we've got a power 2. But if you do that again, you're going to need to take the log base 2 or the log base 4 of 5 now. I think this is hilarious because they, they want you to compute it down to 6 decimals without a calculator. And they pretend this 
change the base next to the base. So it's three. And by whatever this number is. Say it again. Make another one like this. Yeah. Oh boy. Um. Okay, let's do one where you actually can compute it. Uh, this was like 62, and it was log base five. Two is not a perfect power five. So, what's a natural choice for our new base of log? Here we chose five because the 125 is power of five. So we can easily compute that. Let's do the same thing here. Let's choose log base two. That's one. And without a calculator, you're not computing. So there you go. That's the answer. To so as many decimals as you want. Um, yeah, hey, that, that's number 60. Okay. Numbers that I thought I remembered and put them in a different order than what they were for 62 is just 60. Change base formula, it's, it can be handy. It can help you compute something in more reasonable terms. Um, it can save you time and computations. Maybe in, in a step of solving a problem, it'll help, but um, not in computing something. Okay, questions? I think that's it for this section. I think all these rules kind of could naturally send me nowadays after having practiced them a lot and a lot and a lot. Change of base formula still trips me up. I can never remember, uh, I can never remember what it is. It, it's useful, but it, to me it's still something I just look up, right? If I can't I need it, I'll be like, oh, I, I don't like this base of logarithm. I need a different one. If I don't remember it, I'll just look it up. Right then. These things happen a lot more often when doing math. I have a question. Sure. Before you raise that, <laughs> the letter A, that letter A, what means exactly is that? Okay. This A? No, the other A. Like, the yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's our new base. So it's all right here. I'll explain this. This is our, these are all base. Shows. I'll, I'll clean this up real quick. Make a mess of that. So let's say you're given yeah something like this, and 
and you don't like to compute with this base, whatever it is, I don't know. We all know our favorite numbers, right? What's your most hated number? Anyone have one? I Let's do something really weird. Ha! Ah. It's, it's got thick skin. It can take it. It's our most hated number for now. Let's say you don't like computing the base pi because it's irrational. So what you want to do is you're like, oh, my favorite number is, what, six? Something like this? You're like, I want to compute everything in base six. So B is our old base. That's pi. Our new number is 6 because we love base 6 logarithms. Well, the change base formula says you can rewrite this as a logarithm of your chosen base of our input here, so the old input here, and the whole base. Like maybe off the top of your head, you don't know the log base pi of something, but off the top of your head, you know the log base 6 at the top. Pretty simple. Okay. But maybe like 6 is better for some reason. Is that, does that clarify what that A was? It's the new base that you choose. All right, 4.5, last section. We got 22 minutes, perfect, yeah, this will be fine. So this section finally brought together exponentials and logarithms together and it had us solving things now. So now that we've gone through all those rules, trying to actually solve some problems using these things and to find answers to questions that we can't just compute with the calculator. Here we go. Question three. You can probably do this one in your head without logarithms, without rules. But let's just explicitly write down what's happening here. Five to some power is 125. We know that path, right? What is it? So if five to some unknown power is equal to five to some known power, what do you know about those powers? They have to be the same. You can't take five to the sixth and get five to the third. That's not, that's not the same number, right? This is five to a power, this is five to a power, so they have to have the same power. So clearly x is four. Pretty typical, you know, if you can rewrite one side in terms of a, an exponential, and if you can rewrite the other side into terms of an exponential with the same power, the powers have to be the same. Seven is something very similar. It says seven to two x and three is seven to the six plus five x. What I just said, so you have the same base. This is some unknown power, this to some unknown power. But they're the same base, and we do have equality. Powers have to be the same. 
feel like I'm watching an episode of Dragon Ball Z here. You know what I mean? Like Vegeta, Goku, something like this. They've got the same base. They're both Saiyans, right? But one and one, never mind. Okay. So we know 2x minus 3 is 6 plus 5. Powers have to be the same. So we'll just solve. Subtract the two x over, giving us three x on the right. Subtract the six to the left, giving us minus nine on the left. Okay, so dividing by three over here. Yeah. Negative three. Go back and check right. Negative three, so negative six, negative nine, negative fifteen plus six is negative. Alright, check it done. These problems aren't too terribly difficult. And there's an equivalent thing to say, right? If we've got exponentials with the same base equal to each other, then their powers must be the same. Question 21. Uh, maybe other questions will have, hey, you've got a logarithm of some base equals another logarithm of the same base. What's inside the logarithm logarithms must be the same. Okay, that's the equivalent statement based on that thing there. Um, so let's do 21. You're not going to be able to compute this one in your head. You have to solve for it using logarithms, using the rules of logarithms. And you're going to have an answer with logarithms in it. Let's just use the equivalent statement. We've got E, some power is 2. So E is our base. This is equivalent to natural log, because E is our base, of base B, uh, 2 equals 1 minus 4x, the power of E. Unless we can solve. We just treat this like a number. That's all it is. Just treat it like a number. So we'll subtract one over here to the side. Or whatever. Move the four x to the left and we'll switch over here. And then divide by four. If you have a calculator, you can compute that. If you want to try and use the change of base formula to get a easier to compute thing, okay. But that's a good solution right there. Thirty-four. We need something with a challenge. I'm a little bit of heat here. Something. Yeah. 
and you don't want to do the right answer to that, right? If, if the guy gave you this, you would do the difference rule and find the difference. Okay. okay. Let's multiply both sides by 10 to the x. Apparently, 10 is equal to 6 to some number times 10 to that same number. What else do you know about exponents like that on the right side? You've got a product of two things with the same power. That's the same as the product raised to that power, right? Yeah. So, we'll write this. What logarithm do we choose to solve? Log base what? Of what? I don't know what that number is. That's what it is. Something less than one, right? 60 to the first power is 60. Which is something smaller than one. 60 to the zero is one. So it's 10 to the zero one. So somewhere between zero and one. This sort of tomfoolery moving things around. Sometimes it can be helpful. Um, sometimes not. Had we just applied logarithms from the beginning, we could have done it. Choose 10 or choose 6, take the log base 10 of both sides, take the log base 6 of both sides, and rearrange. You can pull down the x's, you know. But first, sometimes you can do some manipulations like this. The things maybe you're more comfortable with, you know, rewriting exponentials. Find an answer with just one logarithm. Thirty four. Oh, that was thirty four. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was looking at the wrong number. Uh, forty. E to the 2x. I don't know if he's rubbing his brow, he's sweating, but fine. 
to do this, or if he's like, this is so easy. I don't know. Okay, but we've just factored this, but why is just this exponential? Because now what do we know? We know either y minus 3 is 0, aka e to the x minus 3 is 0, or y, y plus 2 is 0, or e to the x plus 2 is 0. One of these is impossible. Which one is impossible? E to the x minus 3 or e to the x plus 2. Which one is impossible? This has the equivalent form, which has the equivalent form. Uh, this is the base. This is the result. This is what we plug in. That's a problem. Can't do that. Not fine. So we'll conclude here. This factor, y plus 2, or e to the x plus 2, is never 0. This is never 0. Never. How about the other one? e to the x minus 3. It is, in fact, 0, sometimes. Uh, only one time. We write it in its equivalent form, e to the x equals 3, adding 3 over. We rewrite it in its equivalent form, after log. There it is. This solves this. By the way, this is a perfect example of function composition. Here is just f composed of two. We had done some analysis on this initially to determine the domain of these two things. We would have quickly ruled out this possibility. Okay. 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 Yeah, five more minutes. We're doing pretty good. Fifty. Um, solve the logarithmic equation.
the sum of logarithms with the same base. So we combine them into one, the product of what's inside each log. So if he says x squared, I'm going to write x and x plus 1. Okay, that's fine. But maybe you'll see why in a second. Okay, two logarithms equal each other. They have the same base. So what must be true of their in? They're equal. Okay, so x times x plus 1. A number times one more than the number is 20. Forget about quadratic equations for just a second. This problem is too simple for that. Let's look at the factors of 20. 1 times 20. 20 is not one more than 1. Uh, uh, what's the next one? 4 times 5? That's 20. 4 times 5. We're good. X is 4. If you didn't see that, you would have done exactly what AJ said. X squared plus X is 20. You would have 20. X squared plus X is 20. You would have tried to factor. That would have been fine. You would have said x plus 5, x minus 4. You said, okay, can I plug in x equals 4? Yes, I can plug in 4. 4, yeah, of course. Can I plug in negative 5? No. This doesn't, this is never 0. Not according to our rules. But this one is. So x equals 4 is the solution. Couple minutes. One minute. Problem 62. Speed problem here. Log base 2. Um, looks terrible, looks frightening, it's really not so bad. To speed things up, we're just going to use this rule. 2 to this power is this, it has to be the case. The equivalent form. That's four. Let's subtract it over. Not this problem already. Okay. We know what the solutions are three and negative two. We plug them both in. Let's check. 9 minus 3 is 6. Minus 2 is 4. That's okay. How about negative 2? 4 plus 2 minus 2. That's okay. They're both solutions in this case. That's handy. Let's use this rule and a little bit of factoring for part We're done. So that was sections four, three, four, and five. Um, the homework.